Okay, we have a uh, one cylinder engine here behind us with a plexiglass and just one coil. Normally we have three coils, but we want to see the reaction, and that's the reason for the uh, plexiglass. So we can see what is actually happening inside the cylinder every time it fires. We have a very small amount of inert gases, namely helium, neon, argon, krypton, and xenon, in here for several purposes. Some of the gases basically will transfer energy. Other gases will cool the cylinder. So the engine does not need a, uh, a cooling system at all. Uh, no fuel goes in. Everything is sealed. And our cooling system, the engine cools itself. Remarkably quiet. Here we uh, are removing the batteries, which are two batteries, two 12-volt batteries from our engine. Um, basically, we're trying to show that we do not need the batteries once the engine is uh, running. The engine will produce its own energy and can run without any input from any outside source whatsoever. And uh, this is one of the reasons we're doing this. Move the batteries out. Down there you can see a little pedal. We can use that as a, uh, like a pedal in your car. And you can adjust the timing sequence in the RPMs. Or we also have a hand rheostat where we can uh, adjust the, uh, the timing sequence of the engine, either fast or real slow. And here uh, Joe is going to uh, increase and he can decrease the RPMs with a uh, hand real stat. The engine here right now is doing about 700 RPMs. It's a two-cylinder engine, 400 horsepower, and we can produce approximately 350 kilowatt per hour by attaching a gearbox and a generator to it. This is a small engine. We can we can do four, six, eight cylinder engines up to a megawatt if we want. We have it on a frame, both to a frame. There's a dyno. We're going to do a test with a dynamometer to show the power of the engine. Put a load on it without the batteries connected. Just the engine producing its own energy, its own power. And this runs just like a regular car engine, just has a, a um, key, push button, you can turn it on, turn it off. We'll show you uh, that we can turn the engine off when we start it up again, just like you would your, your regular car. There's a generator up there, and we have a belt. And on the side, you see those long things are uh, resistors. Because we produce so much energy, we have to dissipate about 300 amperes. And here, we're going to drop the RPMs real low. The engine will not shake, throw a rod. Very solid, very smooth running at any RPMs. So it's doing about 75 there. And then he'll increase it again. The engine is made to run at about 400, 500 RPM. And then if we need uh, more RPM, we can put a gearbox on there and increase the RPM to whatever we want. If we're running, instead of a dynamometer, we can run a generator. And here the RPM is going to go real low. Here they are. Might be a 50 RPM. Still the engine runs. Doesn't shake. Doesn't quiver. Now we shut it off so we can show you we shut it off. Now we're um, showing the... Uh, the dynamometer readout, and we're at 123 RPM, 120 RPM, with 276 foot-pounds of torque being applied to the engine. The engine is running, as you can see, at 120 RPM, real smooth. 
and you're going to put a very heavy load on it, up to 500 foot pounds. Um, we're going to try to go as, here we, we went as low as 112 RPMs, and we didn't want to go any lower than that because we didn't want to um, harm the engine, which is the only one we had. So uh, 112 was about as low as we could get. It was a very heavy tractor type uh, hydraulic uh, dynamometer. And there you can see our engine running steady at uh, about 120 RPM. There's a coupler to the flywheel. And you can see that uh, it's a very heavy coupler. And the engine, like I say, is very powerful. It can run at any RPM and will not quiver or shake. It runs real smooth. You can see how heavy that dyno is. It's run hydraulic. Hydraulically cool, cooled with water also. The engine runs at about uh, 130 R, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 140, we, it got to 140 sometimes. There's a battery still disconnected. Um, we have no cooling system in the engine. The engine does not require a cooling system. As I mentioned, it uh, stays at about 140 when you're putting a load on it. So that's you can touch it. It's not, not very hot. Actually, it's quite about lukewarm. There's your dyno. The dyno has its own batteries. And then uh, we'll see what the readout is and we will adjust the RPMs and increase the um, torque or we can increase the RPMs and drop the torque. There's 116 now RPMs and 278 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, we can run this engine at about 100 horse. And, uh, 100 horsepower at, at these low RPMs. And uh, like I say, the maximum horsepower of the engine is uh, 400. Running slow, so uh, we just want to do a test here. See how now we've got 519, 520 RPMs. There's your reserve foot pounds of torque on the right. Uh, the other readout on the right, which means we can add another 400 foot-pounds of torque. So basically about a thousand foot-pounds of torque is what this engine can withstand. And as I say, the lowest we would run it on a load is about 112. There it is, 113. 112 with 500 foot-pounds of torque. That's, that's the best that we want it done to do. And we're only showing 11 horsepower over here to your right, the top right one. We've got 294 uh, foot-pounds of torque in reserve. And it will, it will increase and adjust any way we want. Increase the horses, increase the RPMs, drop the RPMs, increase the foot-pounds of torque. And we'll show you on this readout. Now we're um, running real fast. Well, not real fast, but about 700 RPMs. The torque is always basically the same regardless of your horsepower. So we don't have to run our engine faster than four or five hundred RPMs. Uh, Seven hundred would be a good uh, good speed for the engine. And there you are, 716 RPMs and 770 foot-pounds of torque, 105 horsepower. Actually, the uh, dynamometer got hot on this, but the engine did not. 